Tim, did you see this article in tonight's paper? In my paper? In the Los Angeles Sun? Well, of course I saw it. I wrote it. Uncle Morton, could you look at me, or at least could you let me look at you while we're talking? It's very disconcerting. Oh, certainly. Uh, I'm sorry. It's more comfortable like this. Like when you come home from work and take your shoes off. <laughs> All right, Uncle Martin. What do you want? Did you read this article in tonight's paper? I told you. I wrote it. And it's not an article. It's called The Filler. Well, then would you mind explaining to me, since I don't understand, how a woman can leave $650,000 to a pussycat? Sure. First, she writes a will. Tim. On Mars, a cat is simply a furry little animal with whiskers that loves to chase mice. Well, that's exactly what they are here. Well, then tell me, what a furry little animal with whiskers that loves to chase mice is going to do with $650,000? Invest in a better mousetrap. Tim, I think it's disgraceful. I think it's an effrontery upon humanity. I think I'm going to go to bed. How can you sleep with this on your conscience? I didn't leave the money to the cat. But you are a newspaper reporter. You have a public voice. You have the power to expose this inanity. I'm a growing boy. I need my sleep. I'll talk to you about it in the morning. Good night. I'm still here. I'm angry, but I'm still here. Uncle Martin, look. The, the lawyer for the firm that handles the affairs for the cat is coming over to my office in the morning. So why don't you just come on in and you talk to him and we'll see what we see. Tim, I knew you would come through. I knew you were a man of conscience, a man of inflamed indignities. Well, I just want to get some sleep. And besides, my inflamed indignities were burning me up. <laughs> Guardians of the estate, it is our direct purpose to enforce and protect the will of the late Mrs. Willis. But $650,000 to a cat? It is the law and the desire of Mrs. Willis. In Cleary versus Clooney in Ohio, 1938, the Court of Appeals reversed the decision. The reversal was obtained on the proof of senility. Mrs. Willis was of sound mind and body when she made out her wills. Wills? <laughs> Two of them? I made them both out. The second one gave the money to the children's orphanage. Unfortunately, she never signed it. Or if she did, someone hid it. Now, now, wait a minute. There were two wills? Mr. Snow, Mr. White, Mr. Harcourt, Mr. Finster, Mr. Toog, and I, we all read your little filler on the cat in the afternoon edition of your newspaper. As his attorneys, I'm here to warn you to desist and subside. Any further printed matter relative to the affairs and unique position of the cat will constitute an infringement. If you print one further word of his story, we will slap both you and your newspaper with a very heavy lawsuit. Rosemary, I'm going to sign Max's money over to an orphanage like you finally meant to do. Hey, wait a minute, Aggie. You stay out of this. It's between the sisters. You worry, Rosemary. We don't have to find that second will. Charles is part of attorney over Max. Max is going to wind up in an orphanage where he belongs. And all that money is going to those poor, deserving children. Charles and I, we can use our own money to go to Europe. We don't have to be saddled with any cat. You tell her, Maggie, baby. Swing, you sister. <laughs> Did I hear Max talk? I don't know. Did you? Can we do that, what I said? Well, I'll find it. <laughs> Max hide the second will. Who knows? Who knows what works in the hearts and minds of cats? Sure. He's just a cat. But he will be watched out for, taken care of at the orphanage. For all his nine lives. Room and board and boating privileges on the lake. In case he wants to chase water rats. Max, say goodbye to all these nice people. Meow. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos, hit the subscribe button. Like